Okay, I am back again, and, um, yeah, so as I was saying, VST connections, uh, that's just how you select your microphone or whatever type of interface, you know, you have. That would be where my mixer is, but I think it's because I'm using my Microsoft Express encoder and nothing like that is popping up. Because right now, I have my, uh, mixer set up for my, uh, uh, recorder. So, uh, VST performance, again... Sorry about that. Uh, VST performance is pretty much it'll if you, if you well I'll just click I'll just click it anyway. It's not going to show anything really helpful, but that's what it shows up. And if my mic was plugged in right now, it would show if this is working or not. So if I talked or whatever, uh, it would show right here, and it would just sort sort of spike. It would be like green, and if it hit right here, it start turning red. It's pretty again. It's pretty much it, it'll pretty much look like this. So. That's just showing you how what the input level pretty much is. And then, uh, <laughs> what do we have? Oh, yeah. So, video window, again, that's for the videos. Um, again, I can't use it because, again, my processor cannot handle that. So, yeah, that's, that's the, that. And then, uh, virtual keyboard, that'll, if I'm not mistaken, pull up uh they look like letters it looks literally like a computer keyboard it only have a couple of letters though, right here so let me just virtual keyboard see so that's that and actually i've never what is that i mean if you hold your mouse on it note velocity oh so yeah i think i'm not quite sure what this is again i have not used a lot of this stuff on cubase and uh show panel not sure what that is let's try it out oh okay well that helps uh yeah devices if you click show panel it'll pretty much take all this and just put it into a nice little box right here that i did not know and then device setup this is where you set your drivers uh whatever audio card you want you know uh windows close all that'll pretty much be like you selecting this x it'll just close everything minimize all restore all uh, that I think is pretty much like a reload kind of thing. Like if you're on your web browser or whatever, you hit restore, it's pretty much like reload. So hold on real quick. Add you drink water. Throat's getting a little dry. Okay, so um, Windows, not really sure what that is. Uh, I'm trying to watch what I click on when I'm in here, and I have my recorder running at the same time because my processor right now is probably not doing that great. Uh, so yeah, um, let's see, Cubase LE5 project untitled, that I think is just like an, a, a save project that it's almost like a recent project, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I th oh no, I think that's this one, yeah, that's this one, untitled one, that's the one I'm in, okay, uh, transport, not sure what that is, I think that's moving into another, uh, another project, I think. If that's the case, then actually I just found out something new. <laughs> so yeah, then you have your documentation right here. Getting started, oper operation manual. Uh, this is pretty much like a help guide. It uh, Stein Steinberg on the web. It'll take you to their website. Registration. This is how you register your product, I think. Uh, or you might be able to register uh, Cubase. I I'm not sure what registration is. Because as far as I know, I did the registration when I installed it. So, yeah, that was a trip, but uh, <laughs> I, I did it. I was confused at first, but I wasn't really that tech savvy. So, yeah, uh, but this is literally all the stuff that Steinberg put in. It uh, pretty much helps, and in the credits and copyrights, they uh, have they put that in there. So, Steinberg, uh, again, Steinberg, I'm throwing this out to you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome job. Uh, I really do love Cubase. Uh Again, I was using Audacity for like the longest time because I didn't have any type of recording software and I wasn't really into music. But now I am literally really getting into music and I love being able to record and uh, record my music that I write and make it sound really good. So, uh, so now we did that. All of these are pretty much covered in here. Uh, but just in case activate project uh if you were to turn this off i think it would just pretty much 
not make anything be able to, you can't edit anything on here. You have to activate the project. Uh, constrain delay compensation. Not really sure what that is. Uh, I think that might be for the latency. I don't know, that might improve that. Uh, show inspector. Event line info. Not really sure what these are. These are selected, so they must be active. Open pool. Again, that's, uh, where are we at? Pool. There you go. Control P. You can open the pool, or you can just open it from here. Uh, so yeah. And then open mixer. This, all this right here is this right here. Uh, select the right here. Range selection. This is object selection, so you can click right here. Range. See, so it pretty much highlights that little. See, so it just pretty much highlights whatever you want. Um, split. You can split it however many times you want. Or if you put snap on, see, it'll split it wherever. And then turn snap off and you can split it wherever. Uh, but if you put snap, if snap's on, I don't think I just said this, uh, you could. I'm short-term memory loss. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. If you have snap on, it'll snap to every, uh, every bar. So yeah. Then we got glue. Not sure what that is. I think it just glues the two splits together. Uh, erase. Just pretty much deletes. You know, whatever. See. That's that. And. Um, Zoom pretty much zooms in the project. See, so that's how you do that, and then you can zoom out. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm making a tutorial. It's all good. Sorry about that, Grandma. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, where are we at? Oh, yeah, so zooming in. And then mute, you can mute the track, just select it, or mute this selection right here, see? So then you can unmute it just by clicking it again. And then draw, I think that's for drawing a fade in or fade out, uh, I think, not really sure. Line, play, play, you could just press play from down here or a space bar. And then the color tool, uh, not sure what that is. The only colors I'm familiar with right here uh, track color. That's to keep things a little more organized. You can select it from here, I think. Oh, okay, that's just for that then. No. Uh, you select it from here. That's how I select it. And then, uh, you can change the color of the track. So, that's that. It only selected one because these are split up, so... Let me just, uh... I should probably glue these back together. There you go. So now it's one track. So that's uh that's that an object selection, and then there you go. So now it's red, you know, or whatever color you want. I'll make it a nice yellow. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's that, and then uh, of course you have your mute solo, um, your right read enabled, and write enabled. Uh, record enabled. If I unselect this, I won't be able to record over this, so which is really good, because if you're doing something and you accidentally hit record by accident and you don't have a pre-count on or whatever, it would really suck to have this record over, you know, your uh, record over what you were just working on. So if you click this and it's not lit up, it's inactive, which means you can't record. So that really helps. And then we have monitor, which helps you monitor whatever is going as an input. Uh, read and write, uh, effects, uh, yeah, channels, yeah, channel settings, uh, that's to mess with the EQ, which is pretty much over here. This is what would show up in, uh, the uh, channel settings, but if I click it, I'll show you the set uh, layout. Now, this looks complicated, but it's actually really pretty easy. Uh, right now, you know, I'm gonna play this real quick. Okay, so you can see that, uh, wait, where is it? Where did I just go? Okay, so now if I press play, uh, I'm going to press play, and I'm going to show you what each of these are. This is the low shelf. This adds a lot of bass 
to it, so I'll let you listen to this, listen to the difference. Okay, uh, apolo- I apologize again, ran out of time. So this is part four, I think it is, uh, that I'm in right now. This is uh, the second half of actually, uh, where it, well, well, it's the same same part four, but it's just I ran out of time right now. So yeah, um, so where was I at? Oh yeah, so the channel settings, pretty much this adds a lot of bass, so... If I'll let you listen to this. I'll just turn the loop on. I'll just go to the end of the project real quick. Set the right locator. And I'll just put on a loop. Four. Four. Ah. New. Wait. Sorry about this. <laughs> I'll just move it from here. Why not? Oop. There we go. Okay. So that's that. And then, uh, where were we at? Where were we at? Where were we at? Okay. So... Now I'm going to turn on the loop, set this back. Okay, so now I'm going to let you listen to what these do. The low shelf pretty much adds the low end to it, which makes it bassy. So here's this. So, yeah, after listening to that a bunch of times, you probably memorize what I just said. <laughs> and then uh, you can add a low shelf, uh, which, again, if you just notice right there, it adds a lot of bass to it, uh, which is the low end of, you know, whatever you're EQing. Or you can add a high-pass filter. So now if you listen. So right there, you can see that it takes pretty much all the bass under everything under 100 hertz is just eliminated so it'll take everything out and you can mess how high you want at the level of it i guess you could say so this is the gain it'll show you again if you hold your mouse on something long enough it'll actually tell you what it is but the gain pretty much will be like the level that you want that high pass filter so So, I mean, there, if I take this off. So, you could hear that there's a very big difference. It's less low end. So, now, uh, right here, you have your parametric uh, EQs, which pretty much mess with the uh, the mid frequencies. Uh, you know what? I'm going to get to these in the next. Uh, I'll just run through this real quick. Uh, these add mid to it. So that's that, and then... So if you were to activate both of these, it'd be really, really a lot, a lot of mids. <laughs> and of course, we have your high end over here, which, if you turn up the level, it'll get really, really trebly. Same, because you can hear that kind of noise in the background. It's too much high end. And also it's because that's the background noise in my laptop. It's my fan. So, yeah, that's uh, what hap- That's what the EQ is. I'll show you the uh, effects over here uh, in the next half, which is going to be part five. So stay tuned. All right. Thank you.